What is going on everybody? Iraq here bringing you guys a brand new video. Hope you guys are all having a great day today. Today's video wanted to talk over just a couple of controller settings. Maybe you're brand new to Cold War. Maybe this is your first Call of Duty. Maybe you just need a couple tips on finding the right sensitivity or just some decent controller tips to help you when you're starting out uh, settings wise. If you guys do enjoy the content at all, make sure you leave a like, comment and subscribe. It always helps the channel grow each and every day. And if you are interested in seeing any live streams of mine, link is going to be in the description box down below. So without further ado, let's go over my controller settings and a couple things you should definitely tune to help you guys out by far. All right, so controller, the settings, everything that we got to do. So obviously make your, you uh, make sure you're on controller. Um, if you're on console, you don't have to see like the PC, everything. But um, yeah, so I play PC controller and these are the settings that work the best for me. Now under graphics, the first thing I would at least try to do, if you've never played on affected, I highly recommend you trying it. Um, I think default by most called most call of duties is independent so independent is when you're aiming down sight it zooms your gun in to what it's showing here what it says aim down sights will zoom the field of view to its intended value now what affected does is like it's what it states is aiming down sights will zoom to a value closer to your field of view setting this does not apply to zooms with a magnification over four times so as you can see here i play on 103 field of view Default has been 60 for like the longest time. I know people that go all the way up to 120. So what field of view does is obviously everything that's in your picture, in your view. At 60, you're like here, this is all you can see. And the higher number you go, the more you can see. Probably a lot of you already know this, so you can skip this part of the video. But what affected does is while you're zooming in, it doesn't zoom in quite as far. So it's very, very beneficial to close range fights. So you're not zooming in so much. And it's, I mean, Call of Duty is a short to medium range gunfight most of the time game. So I think that it is very beneficial if you try, at least try affected. And on longer range fights, what it does is it gives you like a visual appearance of less recoil when you're aiming down sights for longer range fights because it doesn't zoom in quite as much. So it doesn't look like you get as much recoil. So that's another thing, another bonus to playing on affected. So as far as the controller settings itself, um, I know this game, it goes up to 14 in previous CODs. Modern Warfare, it went all the way up to 20. And on Modern Warfare, I played 7-7. Seven, seven. On this game, I play 6-6. Six, six. Um, I think a very good starting point in this game is anywhere between 5 sensitivity and 7. And then if you feel like you can go faster, work your way up from there. But if you're going faster, I feel like you're just moving yourself you're putting yourself in positions to where you might not be able to see someone and like yeah it's good if you can control it i will admit but for most games like this i think with aiming and everything six six seven seven five five those are good starting points and then you can move from there um the ads stick sensitivity i have mine at 0.95 um default here is one one and i think it only goes down by tens and in order for me to put 0.95 in i had to use my mouse and come in here and type that in i think there's a way on playstation you can do it you might have to look that up i'm not on playstation or xbox i'm sorry but i think there is a way where you can actually somehow like type a number in here or something like that now as far as your button layout i know people like to play default and everything but um tactical is a very good one to use if you want to try and like exert your gameplay a little bit better i definitely recommend uh, def I don't recommend default, but if you got to play default, play it. tactical. There's a lot of good advantages playing that. Um, and then bumper jumper tactical. I know some people will play stick and move. I personally play bumper jumper tactical. I come from a halo background, so that's why my jump is L2. And when I jump with when I'm jumping with L2, I don't have to take my hand off of my thumbstick when I'm aiming to hit A or anything or X or whatever you're playing on. So it's just a good way. I'm used to it. And with um, having my crouch slash prone on my right stick here, 
moving, aiming, and sliding, and canceling, and everything like that. It just makes your gameplay a little bit better. It makes your movement better. So that's why I play on that. And I definitely recommend you uh, flipping your bumpers and your triggers. What that does, it's instead of having your aim and shoot on L2, R2, it's putting it on L1, R1. It gives you a little bit of more of a comfortable feel, in my opinion. And of course, like your trigger or your bumpers are more responsive and quicker than your triggers in most scenarios. I know some people have like trigger stops like I do with my scuff impact, but um, I just recommend trying out playing flipped. It's just a lot easier in my opinion. Uh, definitely turn controller vibration off. The reason why I always have this off is because when having the vibration on, I feel like I can throw my aim off a little bit. Um, there's a huge discretion with this setting right here. Um, it says ADS sight aim. And it says in the context that you can see over, over, over there somewhere, it says ADS assist is always disabled in multiplayer. That does not mean you don't have aim assist in multiplayer. Okay. That that's just strictly for like campaign and stuff. There is aim assist, but it's just a little bit different in this call of duty. So that, and then definitely slow down in strafe assist. Definitely have both of these enabled when you can as a controller player, more aim assist, the better for you. Majority of the rest of the stuff is kind of personal preference. The ones that I would recommend definitely having on is armor behavior. So if you do play somewhere like the battle, if you do tend to play more of the battle royale modes, applying all with just one press is better than having to continuously pounding the button to put plates on. Um, when it comes to the advanced here, the default on here, I think is 20 for both of these numbers. That's your stick drift. So stick drift is when you are not moving your controller at all. Your, your character is just standing there and you start seeing this. Or if your character starts walking left and right. Um, that just means you have stick drift on your controller and you have to obviously move it up. What I tend to tell people to do is start from zero on both the input on both of these inputs. So not the not the. Uh, the max was the minimums. I tell people to start from zero and then move up one for each one. So if you have stick drift starting at zero, move it up one. If you still do, move it up again. If you move it up again and it's not there, then move it back down one just to see like maybe you can play on that because what this is doing is making your sticks more it's making them more responsive so it's more keen to your movements as soon as you input them instead of having like a slight delay because i think the the default is 20 definitely move these down you don't need to have on that the sweet spot i think is between zero and five i want to say but i know some people have to move it up even more just because they have stick drift to like and their controllers are really old but generally newer controllers you can have this down so i play on one one and i just put these to 100 i've been saying a lot of this the last few things are based off of how you feel and what you want to play on i use auto sprint some people don't uh, equipment behavior some people don't have that as hold but or they have it at toggle but i would think the very last one you should try and experiment with is interact slash reload behavior default here is tap to reload now if you're coming across a gun that you need to pick up or if you need to run across ammo or something in um like warzone when this gets integrated integrated prioritizing interact is definitely the play here so instead of having to hold the button down to pick stuff up you can just tap it and then when you need to reload you hold it down to, to reload i think this is just a little bit easier um my opinion obviously if you guys want to try something else differently go for it but in a sense those are all the default ish settings that you guys might want to play with some things you might want to change and I think this is just overall a generic place where you can start and then change it from there. You experience people. I don't know why you would even want to watch a controller video setting, whatever. But um, yeah, that's just going to be it for me. The basics of some decent controller settings to start yourself off with this game. If you guys did enjoy the video, got something out of it, feel free to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Like I stated before, it always helps the channel grow. And uh, I'll catch you guys in some streams if you feel like it. Thank you guys for the support, and I will see you in the next one.